my intro almost made it it started well then it just <clears throat> ended horrifically <clears throat> not good I need to literally go in and change this is interesting with the intro intro is divided in gallery images and they're all the same gallery image more or less no there are three of them but they are separated by scaling and repeating but they're cloned but there is an offset in them and the offset is meant to have them not all move at the same time because then there will be gaps and uh, since I copied uh, you did a backup and cleaned up the drive and only kind of save the essential data it did something with the timing I don't know what it's going into <laughs> it just keeps getting worse and worse that damn intro hey FK how's it going what up what up so I feel like another monster how about some suggestions for monsters? I'm all ears. Hey, Gria. How's it going? What is the up? I loved, by the way, seeing all the... all the... weekly studies of the ref really cool to see undead sorceress Oof, I like it I like it I'm gonna do it dim struggler I don't know what a dim is Viret, but I like it let's roll a dice let's see some more options we got two more minutes I don't know what the dim struggler is, but I like it. Including yours, Gria. Yours was really cool. I really liked yours. Um, definitely a different flavor. I like the. Um, hey, Zelin. I like the fact that for every one of you that did the study, the the uh, result is absolutely different which is great and which is the like the the purpose of it all and the reason for the monday study is, is just that you you try to take away what you need from it from a pretty solid um, reference point you know like a, there is something interesting to be had from the reference so seek out what you like about it right and then study it and try to pick something up and i loved i loved seeing that um, in all of your studies there is definitely uh values there to be analyzed you know for example how come it feels so bright uh, you know what makes that light shine so much you know where is it, how how do you need to alter the subtlety of the values to get that kind of power across? Griang, you can you can do it. All right, so we got two two topic suggestions: undead sorceress and dim struggler. Whatever a dim struggler is, no idea. Uh, but if no one else has anything, I'll start looking for the dice. I get them with a struggler, strangler, struggler, someone ha who's having a hard time, so a, a stupid hard person having a hard time. <laughs> hey, Frisha, Frisha, how's it going? All right, so split in three. One, two, three is first. Okay. Undead sorceress, Akagria. GG. Undead. Source. 
sorceress, sorceress, undead sorceress. Okay, I have one picture in my mind, but it feels like I've done it before, like a floating skeleton wizard. Brr. So I want to like, how can I, how, how, how can I switch it up? I don't want to rehash. It feels like I have done this before. So let's add a orb circle to it. What can we do to completely sh shift up my brain? Oh, uh -huh. that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. All right. So the idea. There we go. <clears throat> so I forced my mind into a new space. Uh, the initial idea was um, like a floaty wizard, you know, like rah, like ghost, like we've all seen, right? And an undead, and she has some skeleton face and being all mean, like oh, surprise, surprise. So, <clears throat> in order in order to combat that, hey Miguel, how's it going? What? So in order to combat that, I force my brain to think of a sphere. And how can I place a sphere, force a sphere concept-wise, that makes sense for an undead sorceress? So I was thinking, orb, second thought was, she's above a magic orb, right? It's like, ah, too generic. What if she is a part of the orb? Was my second thought. And third thought was, what if she's, she is the orb of sorts, right? So my mind went to like an orb. This is going to be a little bit like extremely out there idea, right? An orb with uh, dead bodies inside. And she's kind of emerging out of the orb. And she has some sort of like multiple arm thing happening. So she's kind of carrying the orb and she's um, kind of like hunched over. And very like uh, old, old hag type sorceress. Long hair. So it's like a see-through orb and she's kind of emerging out of the body parts from the orb. That was kind of like what where my mind went, right? So that's kind of an interesting thing, you know, where where it's so easy to go it's so easy to go with just one idea. Like, like that's my thought, I'm gonna go with it. And um, let's make whatever is in my mind. But if you, if you take this time and, and, and force yourself into a new place, and it's the same thing with, let's say, um, thumbnailing. Thumbnailing does the same thing to your mind. You practice this, right? By doing thumbnails on the same subject. Uh, this is the beginning of a new fetish. Nice. Too late. <laughs> so the idea is, is uh, with the thumbnailing is that, uh, let's say you stick to the same subject of an undead sorceress, right? You do thumbnail one. You go down that route. Uh, thumbnail two. Um, let's let's go the orb direction, right? Uh, thumbnail three: What if half ghost, half uh, solid? Uh, sketch three. Uh, you know, you, you sketch these these um, ideas out, right? And you you explore them, and you force yourself to draw. Um, that's why, for example, whenever I teach someone. Uh, thumbnailing or designing, I tell them, I don't want one design to look like the next one. 
they have to be absolutely different from each other, uh, there's no point in repeating, right? So if you have a cool idea about uh, this orb, right? Make one version that says that idea. And then the next option, you can't do the orb again, right? Or you can sketch the orb out again. And until you find that perfect combination, then you um, consolidate into one. And then you go, that's, that's my thumbnail number one, right? And then idea number two, what is the idea number two? Oh, maybe she's like been dipped in, in, in uh, melted iron. That's why she's undead, like the, that's why she died, but she's a cursed and she she has this curse within the metal and the metal is kind of burning or whatever you know whatever you can come up with you sketch it out but it's so important that you practice if you're going to be a concept artist it's so important that you practice that aspect of sketching that you don't marry uh, yourself to one idea and you go with that idea because more often than not you will come up with a cooler idea as soon as you start juggling and playing with uh, with the idea you know like what if it looks like this what if it does oh what if it's made out of ice what if she's uh, water being be, you know whatever A sorceress. I mean, she's an undead sorceress, right? So she actually did fail. <laughs> she did maybe curse herself or, or, you know. I want to try to reintroduce like like light here I feel like I'm being a little bit too production arty so I want to try to mess up the sketch here uh, we'll see how that goes like a reverse engineering um, light <laughs> dead light only process make it a little bit dirtier dirty but yeah so it, it's the same I think it the same applies to if you're an illustrator uh, like it's really important that you explore all the visual solutions that you don't jump the gun on the first thumbnail of an illustration you really need to make sure that each thumbnail is like vastly different from the previous one so that you're actually pushing the idea, you're actually moving the, the needle forward rather than just in the same space, you know. Except if it's a lich. Yeah, what is the definition of a lich? That's like um, a, a wizard succubus of sorts, right? A lich is like a cursed undead um, magic vampire, <laughs> right? Is that a, is that correct? <laughs> I don't know. Let's add some kind of magical shapes to this orb, so it's not just a big glass, stupid glass orb like it is now. Zealin, so they have like some sort of talisman that makes them come back to undead, unlife. So it's more of like a, I guess, a gene. A dead sorcerer who uses his magical powers to stay alive. That's pretty cool. 
that that goes really well with this idea then is like you collect body parts <laughs> collects bodies to stay alive. Hmm. Yeah, the hands they gotta go that way. There's something to be said about a lot sketchier artists than I am. Like for me, I'm I'm like forever caught in production hell. I think um, <laughs> what I mean with that is because I do so so much production art, I define everything um, in my paintings. It's like this shape is this shape, this shape is that shape. There's no like. Okay, that's that's good enough. But there's so many other artists that that kind of have that ability to to just be loose and and suggestive and kind of layer marks on top and just leave it. Like they just leave it. Like yeah, I like that. I'll leave it like that. But for me, like in my production our mindsets like it's not defined no one can model from that I need to go in I need to go in there and mess around with it so it reads perfectly every shape needs to be correct and I think it's good to have that practice but also in more in more situations like this I, I, I wish I was able to be a lot more suggestive even though I mean my style is quite suggestive and brush marky and uh, things like that. But in my mind, uh, I am not enough. Hey, Brendan, how's it going? I saw your post on Facebook about your, your stats. It's pretty good, good stuff for um, joining the the what's it called fray the twitch army cool stuff i had a glimpse yesterday uh when you were streaming uh, but i was very busy i couldn't i couldn't say hi really uh, but it was uh you did some poster pretty cool climbing the ranks there you go uh french or french question do you if do you if environment uh, yes environment was five <laughs> do i know if concept art environment concept art is well paid um hey boss how's it going of course I don't think there is any difference really like, oh, you're a concept artist, character artist, you'll get more pay than an environment artist. I don't think that's a thing. I think it's more or less who is, who is doing the environment um, and what is that artist getting paid? I haven't heard to my knowledge that there is a difference between environment artist and character artist or monster artist uh, in terms of payment. The only thing I know is the difference between artists and not about uh, the category they do art for. Like skill always pays. You know. Doesn't matter what you do. How are you, Bose?
can definitely earn a good living um, on being a concept artist. I'm lucky to say that uh, the industry is really uh, because the concept artist has a, such a vital role especially if you are um, a skillful designer you design cool things there you can be very successful and a lot of people don't like there's I think there's a lot of people who forget that yes you have to be yourself yes you have to you know design cool stuff um, but there is so much more to designing that there is actually rule sets there's actually aesthetics there's actually you know there's there's it's a very complicated matter and a lot of times uh, when you you, when you're a good designer, the designer have ability to um, control all these aspects. You know, good shape, good narrative, good personality, great combination of color, all these things. And uh, I think you gotta really, I think in general, as a word of advice, uh, if I would give like an advice um, for, even for environment artists as well is to be really conscious about um, it's hard to hard to pinpoint but try to be very conscious about the appeal to what you're doing like something simple like have i seen this before or if i've seen this before like if like now i'm tasked to, was tasked to draw an undead sorceress like i could have gone with, with my first idea it would have got gotten across i would have been able to influence the idea enough where i could happily say it you know you could see it, it was made by me right like oh it looks like a a, a bjorn concept or whatever but you gotta like consider is that enough or what did you bring to the table is it just yet another generic attempt um, and sometimes pushing too far or pushing too hard a concept could also mean you know like what's the point who cares about the uniqueness of the character if it doesn't make sense for uh, for the image if it you know it's like you could argue that this take of a uh, undead sorceress is too far you know like she's gone into the realm of uh, just a monster now it's not you wouldn't necessarily first go oh that's a sorceress undead sorceress right now it's more like oh what monster is this so you could say in a way that i failed to make an undead sorceress read um initially like an undead sorceress right so i could i could always start dialing back the design introducing elements that uh, reinforces the idea but that is that is has to be a conscious decision it has to be a conscious understanding that okay oh shit i am straying too far away here the let's say like the appeal the market appeal of this character is starting to be lost and i like i i can't uh but in this instance it's just a, a sketch it doesn't matter but if it would be a be for a client you would have to consider okay do i need to dial this back do i need to uh, change something up drastically in order for the face value to read correctly you know so that the client has a product that they can go look at our new undead sorcerers cheers frogs have a good morning happy morning <laughs> I 
I was thinking this morning with Quentin. Uh, I always have the unpleasant feeling of missing a thing that changes an average illustration into a good illustration. How is it going in the industry? And you assume it's for art director to do that. Um, uh, the games behind me are games I worked on. I started putting together my kind of hall of fame, but some fell down and I have worked on over 70 games. So the whole wall would be wallpaper. So I got to do that at some point, but uh, yeah. It's not my favorites, it's just these are the things I've worked on type deal. Um, so both, yeah, in one way you are right, like it's the art director's um, opportunity to help push an image when you, if you don't know where you're doing wrong, the art director or the lead should help you uh, with acquiring like the knowledge to to push it further if that makes sense you know uh, but it's definitely a skill that you need to practice as an artist in general so that you are able to direct yourself to what is correct what is the right tone you know where am i making mistakes that makes this illustration just good versus great you know, sometimes you make a mistake at the very beginning and you build a foundation on shit. Sometimes you have a great foundation, but you take a right instead of a left at some point <laughs> during the illustration and you mess up and you dig your hole and it's going to be really, really hard for you to dig, dig yourself out of it or climb, climb out of it. But with practice, you would be able to spot those mistakes. And it's like a, one thing that I have wanted to discuss on the uh, warm up is like structure when you're doing an illustration, when you're doing a concept, when you're um, exploring an idea. And a lot of reasons, for example, why I segment up my approach a lot. It's like, okay, I do grayscale, I do color, I do sketching, you know, like it's one thing after the other rather than everything at once. I could easily just do everything at once. Uh, but when you compartmentalize your process, you compartmentalize your ideas, uh, and when you're able to define each step, like, okay, I need good shapes. You make the good shapes, read really well. Then you go, okay, these shapes needs to have light on them, right? And then you start... Um, defining the light but as you're defining the light you could have easily done the mistake of just going uh, generic you know and then you would you, you would have flat materials so then when you add light you also have to add material behavior and when you do that and you know da -da 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 -da, one after the other but if you do all at once it's going to be really hard you know or if you like want to learn to, if you want to juggle, like you can take six balls and start juggling. If you're really good at it, you can do it. There's no problem. But if you start with one ball, okay, okay. Next ball, okay, okay. Third ball, okay. Now fourth, fifth, okay. Now sixth, okay. This is really tricky, but I can do it, you know. And it's the same way with like, how do I spot uh, the mistakes I'm making to make a painting good from, gr uh, what's the difference between good and great, right? This, is your ability to pinpoint where where the illustration needs to go, when you need to turn it, when you need to uh, make a decision to change, repair, push forward, enhance. For example, you know, like I always do my grading and atmosphere final touches in the end. Some people do it at the very beginning and then they build around it. Some people uh, don't even do that. And, uh, and in, 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 in the big picture, it doesn't really matter in, in terms of like a checklist everyone has to follow. It's your own checklist, it's your own process. But you have to be able to spot where 
where where you're making the mistakes and where the image starts falling flat and an art director definitely can help you with that because they they have more knowledge and they can see where you're going and they can pinpoint usually a good art director can pinpoint where you're making mistakes and it can go oh dial back the shadow over here um, boost the color over there uh, your palette is a bit flat introduce an orange maybe and then you go oh, all right and then you follow the advice of the art director and all of a sudden uh, the image is significantly better right but the idea is is for example that's why a lot of studios want senior artists so that the the feedback won't be technical you can you can have shortcut discussions about pivoting an approach to the image not based on technical feedback but um, like, you know, philosophical or or more specific, you know, like uh, some sharper shapes, so or it's not feeling aggressive enough, or whatever, and and then you understand, okay, I need to do these changes. The art director don't need to tell me these things because I have to be able to to analyze what he wants or she wants, and and make those calls. To make the image better but a good art director will also see when you can't do it and go all right these are the changes i want like everyone can struggle and then it's good if an art director is able to say you know like okay we need a little bit more you know shape over here i don't like the narrative over there and, and, and things like that but and sometimes you can't escape the fact that an art director wants a specific thing. Maybe not what you had in mind. Like in this instance of the drawing I'm making now. So I'm making an undead, uh, undead sorceress, but I'm making it quite gruesome. Maybe the art director like, no, it doesn't fit the game. You can't do this. It's a great idea, but we can't use this, right? So I want another one. I want one that's floating. And then you go, okay. okay. So he, he, I can't have them, the, the other sources like this. So I need to come up with a cool solution to the design task of a floating un, undead sorceress. And then you have to go, right, like I did in the beginning of this sketch, okay, I don't want to do the classic floating undead sorceress. So I, so I force myself to think of a sphere. So if they don't want that, and uh, they want a floating one, and what can I add to the mix as a designer, as a narrative, you know, I'm making the calls, what can I make to make it cool? So you go back to square one, rebuild the image from scratch, rebuild the idea from scratch, don't reuse, don't, you know, lean on this again, this is dead now, you know, this is dead to me. <laughs> and you move on and you come up with something new and, and you, you construct it at the best of your abilities so that when you reach the point that you can show them uh, you know ideally you you've been able to make something great instead of good and then the art director can if you you're unable to the art director can help you make it great if that makes sense Um, Brendan, well, thank you. It was really good fun. I mean, I can't take credit for it solely, but it was good fun to work on it and um, try to stay true to the design language that they've established. It was a really fun task. French, French, yeah, <laughs> easily done. Rule.
rule of cool isn't always applicable, you know. Like there was someone who tagged me on a post and asked about like what's the difference between designing a female character and a male character? Is there certain situations or things that you need to take like you're exposed to while making a female obviously they were baiting uh kind of feminism point of view right and i and i replied no it's not the um when you design a cast of characters you design them as a product you know it, it's arbitrary uh in that sense you know like uh, if it's a designing a dragon a woman a man undead whatever and i wrote there's good designers and there, the difference is that there's good designers and bad designers and i think that's very true there's some really bad designers that design really generic and stupid women and there's a lot of good designers that design some really cool and memorable women <laughs> I didn't write that long answer. I, uh, it was very con concise and to the point. But nevertheless, it, it, it kind of breached on the same subject here, but uh, great and good. Captain Boss, I mean, there, it, the job of an art director is to help you to help the image, to guide, to direct the image, to get to the point where it needs to be, right? And ideally, uh, you you will pick up what the artist or the art director is telling you so that it's not going to be a repeating discussion. Obviously, everyone knows that not everyone is p perfect. Everyone is on a learning curve. And uh, if you're a good art director, you will you will hold someone's hand if they need it. You will give them the opportunity to grow, uh, to learn. Uh, you don't want to nitpick constantly because if you're nitpicking constantly, that cr becomes the culture. And then the artist that expects nitpicking and micromanaging stops thinking. They're just meeting the demands and waiting for the next set of nitpicks. And that's really, really negative. You'd have to let them, you, you have to make your artists, if you're an art director, you have to make your artists think and stand for themselves and be proud of their decision. And sometimes as an art director, as long as the product they're designing is on target, but not the way you exactly want it, you, you might want to consider you know, letting one or two slide in order for the artist to grow and become better and become more independent and, and filling out their own shoes. Time is up. Rip. So it's pretty fun. Pretty fun idea to to uh, to go after. Um, I was happy I um, I didn't go with a initial idea. I think this turned out uh, much nicer. Kind of like that. Cool. Nice spotlight on on the undead sorcerers. Uh, Bali Banator, if I'm going to work pretty late, this is my warm up. This I'm at the start of my day. Uh, so I have eight hours of work ahead of me. How do I find this concept? I told you. 
<laughs> I walked you through it. Literally walked you through it. Um, all right, let's find someone to, to... Oh, who are you? That's a pretty cool study. Let's raid this person. Oh, subscriber only. That's not. Okay, Tofu Senshi is struggling. Let's raid Tofu Senshi. Or she start just starting sketching a character with a gun. So that will be fun to watch. Um, all right, thanks everyone for joining. Have a fantastic day. Uh, good night if you are that part of the world. Um, I might stream over the weekend. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but uh, have a good one and see you on Study Monday. Let's go and give uh, Tofu Senshi some love after the outro. So don't go anywhere. Join the raid. Bye.